These are the audience ones. Well, to be clear, this is one version of the audience ones as John McDonald and his team now offers three options to purchase. The one retails for $995 and offers a single, wideband 8-ohm driver with no crossover known as the AS3. According to audience, the sonic promise this speaker is boasting is the ability to image like a son of a gun while delivering a natural mid-range unmatched by loudspeakers many times their size and price. On the back of all the ones, the design uses a passive radiator for bass duty, which avoids any boominess or farting out. The second option, which retails just north of a grand, is the same as the one, with the difference being a new driver known as the AS2-16. The new driver uses higher quality steel in the magnets and a better motor to basket assembly from retooling of the basket and CNC machining of the motor structure. And last, these little black beauties are the Audience One's V2 Plus, which retail for $1445. The V2 Pluses push the envelope with not only the better driver, but also an upgrade in the internal wiring consisting of Audience's new AU24SX wire and the use of beautiful solderless tellurium spring tension binding posts. Speaking of cables, Audience sent over a slew of their cables for me to play with consisting of their AU24SE phono cables, interconnects and speaker cables, along with the newer AU24SX phono cables, interconnects and speaker cables. Even more, Audience also supplied me with their SEI power cords and this little box, called the AR2P. More than just a glorified surge protector, Audience claims this cutting-edge design provides the best power conditioning without the loss of dynamics. Topping things off, John and company was kind enough to send me these Cardus Audio wall outlets to replace whatever the heck came in the house. And while I'd remain skeptical that these outlets alone would make a world of difference, I would also argue that they certainly won't hurt to try. As a total package and going back and forth a couple of times through the review process, I'll be leaving these outlets installed and subscribe to the idea that everything matters to a certain degree. While I'm at it, all the audience cables sent me, especially their phono cables, offer some of the highest resolution and transparency of any cable that I have ever used at any price. They aren't cheap, and only those who buy into the idea that cables can make a difference would bother hearing me out, but if that's you, these cables are plain fantastic. The connectors are no joke. They offer low mass and high contact area, and the wire being used is an audiophile favorite known as OCC, or Ono Cast Copper. Without getting technical, it's been consistently my favorite used in many different designs, and with the audience cables, my experience has been the same. Regardless of your viewpoints on cables and whether or not they make a difference, let's circle back to the star of the show and find out when combined with everything audience threw at me, if these audience ones can earn a stamp of approval. And with a warm welcome back to New Record Day, that is exactly what we are going to do. The ones are designed to be used as a desktop speaker or used for near-field applications. With that being the case, they do just fine showing who's boss in rooms like mine, which is 15 feet wide and 14 feet deep, with rooms connecting behind and to the sides. For those who are questioning my sanity of having these speakers down on the ground and facing up on the ramps the audience provides, I get it. This setup is far from typical and being totally honest, I discovered this location as a happy accident months ago while cleaning. Either way, the one's level of transparency and ability to image like nobody's business makes this kind of unusual placement work just fine. The ones rarely draw attention to themselves, and with the corners of the room helping with bass duty, you would be very surprised just how large these tiny little speakers actually sound. Speaking of bass, the extension of the ones is surprisingly good and hit the 40s with no problem in room while taking measurements. 
Also, top end extension and treble response competes with the overall clarity I've heard in other speakers making their way through the doors here at New Record Day. Detail and spatial cues are easy to discern, and cymbal hits sound realistic and bold. While I suspect the top and bottom end extension of a well-designed multi-driver speaker using a crossover could cover more sonic ground than the ones, it's the clarity and resolution sandwiched in the middle of the audio spectrum that makes these speakers worth chatting about. In near-field setup, which is different from desktop setup, the front wall and side walls are further away from the listener. In this configuration, the ones reach into their sleeve and yank out an ace. This is my preferred way to listen to these little speakers, and without reservation, I can agree that these speakers achieve reference quality mid-band transparency when placed in near-field situations. Unlike the Harbeth P3 ESRs, which we had the pleasure of checking out, the ones aren't interested in serving up sweet, comfortable lies, especially when it comes to mid-band. Meaning, the mid-range on the P3 ESRs is rich, full and smooth, and makes vocals sound glorious regardless of how it's recorded. When it comes to the ones, you will only be given the same treatment if the recording calls for it. Otherwise, what you're hearing is what's been put to tape. Simple as that. Transparency being the key word here, the ones mid-band is very window-like, and when it comes to detail retrieval, there are a few single driver rivals that I've come across thus far. Even the OnePlus Ones I reviewed a while back for audience didn't offer this level of accuracy I hear in the One V2 Pluses. Now look, to be fair, the OnePlus Ones I reviewed also received an internal makeover, and after chatting with John McDonald, he mentioned the new version of the OnePlus One offers huge improvements over what I heard in the original with the use of a filter. Either way, the One V2 Plus's mid-range is squeaky clean, ultra-transparent, and for anyone looking for 100% honesty in the mid-band, the audience ones will surely float your boat. Listening to the ones as a desktop speaker was also a situation where team audience shows up to the plate and smacks it straight out of the park. Trying out a number of selections I am familiar with, I found these speakers to once again tell the truth and get the heck out of the way. Also, with closer proximity desktop listening, I was able to focus more on the top end of the ones, and I noticed just how revealing these little drivers can be on access. Checking out Ben Howard's Every Kingdom, which I know like the back of my hand, the one's open and transparent sound handed over every single strum, thump, and slap I have heard on this record with speakers that triple the price of these little speakers. Again, the mid-range transparency offered by the ones is without question what these speakers are all about, and once you hear it, it's easy to forgive the fact that they won't play extreme bass or break triple-digit decibels before gassing out. Placement with desktop use can, however, be tricky, and I want to make sure that anyone checking out this review and hitting the checkout will experience what I am hearing, so I'll give some friendly new record day advice. Even with the ramps, I found that raising the ones more off the surface to work best. Tow them in where the drivers aren't pointing right at your ears, but just to the outside of them or directly to the back of your noggin. You will know when you have them locked in, because the soundstage will open up and the vocals will lock down dead center even when you're moving your head around. So it's been just over one year since I reviewed the Audience One Plus Ones and concluded that when it comes to Audience's little 3-inch driver, the potential for greatness does indeed come in small packages. While I prefer the Ones over the One Plus Ones I reviewed, I am excited to see what John and company has cooked up in the One Plus One version too. Early reports coming in are very positive, and I wouldn't hesitate a second at checking out those speakers as well. As for the smaller audience ones, my relationship with these little speakers is built on a foundation of respect and concrete admiration. I recently checked out another review that mentioned some concerns of these speakers not playing loud. I have to be honest and clear the air for those who read the same write-up. Of all of the salient attributes the one has tucked away up its sleeve, its ability to play very loud is certainly one of them. Will you crank Metallica at 110 decibels with them? Eh, no, not quite. 
but reaching into the 90s without losing composure was never an issue for me. Also, even at high volumes, you hear a cohesive mid-band that surpasses expectations and works very well, especially in desktop and near-field applications. Are they the last word in hi-fi for large rooms? Well, no, they're not. But I have used these guys with subwoofers relieving the bottom end and had surprising results that would keep this audio file very happy for a very long time. With the less is more approach and tackling many of the issues that so many speakers have starting with the driver, what audiences manage to accomplish with their line of speakers is something worth celebrating. Yeah, the audience one has impressed me and it does come with high recommendations here at New Record Day. <laughs> 